Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. Ang title po sa pag-aaral natin ngayon, Paul's Motive in Insisting on the Gospel. Paul's Motive in Insisting on the Gospel. Tayo po ay nag-aaral ng libro o ng sulat ni Apostle Paul kay Titus. Maikling sulat lamang ito, composed of three chapters. At sinunod-sunod po natin ito simula ng chapter 1 at ngayon ay nasa chapter 3 na tayo. And nakatutok tayo dito sa particular section na ito ng verses 5 up to 7 na kung saan ay makikita natin ang napakagandang mga aspeto ng Ibanghelyo, the Gospel. Now we come to verse 8. Punta na tayo dun sa susunod na verse. No, verse 8 where the Apostle Paul explains why we should insist on preaching and teaching this message. Bakit kailangang ituro, bakit kailangang idiin itong mensahe na to na kanyang binanggit sa Titus chapter 3 verses 5 to 7 at itong kanyang paliwanag. The saying is trustworthy and I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. So why does Paul go into this great discourse on our salvation? Bakit niya dinitalyon, lalo ni nakalagay sa verses 5 to 7? Because these doctrines of God's grace in our salvation will motivate us to excel in good deeds. It will motivate us to continue to do good deeds and ultimately, ang mangyari pa niyan, people are going to be attracted to Jesus Christ and hopefully they too will receive Jesus and experience itong bagong buhay na ito na na-experience sa mga mana ng palataya ngayon. So, now to help us in our study, ito yung mga points na gusto kong daanan natin as we look at the details nitong verse na ito ng Titus chapter 3 verse 8. First, I want us to look at the value of the message. Anong kahalagahan nitong mensahe na ito na tinatawag natin Ibanghelyo? Pangalawa, the duty of the messenger. Ano ang responsibility ng messenger? The duty of the messenger. Ikatlo, the immediate objective of the instruction. Ano yung immediate na objective na bakit binibigay itong lahat na instruction na to ni Paul? And finally, we want to look at the missionary motive of the instruction. The missionary motive of the instruction. Okay, simula natin ngayon dun sa unang punto na may kita natin dito sa verse 8. The value of the message. Ang kahalagahan nitong mensahe na to. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, he begins verse 8 by saying, The saying is trustworthy. The saying is trustworthy. Yang mga salitang yan ay common dito sa pastoral epistles. Pag sinabing pastoral epistles, that includes 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus. Lagi nating makikita yung phrase na yan or yung clause na yan, the saying is trustworthy. We find that in 1 Timothy 1.15, 1 Timothy 3 verse 1, 1 Timothy 4 verse 9, 2 Timothy 2 verse 11, at saka ito ngayon sa Titus chapter 3 verse 8. What do you mean when you say trustworthy? It means na yung mensahe na binigay ni Paul is certainly true and it can be fully trusted. Talagang totoo itong mensahe ito at saka pwede mong mapagkatiwalaan ito. Now, sa mundo natin ngayon, lalo na dito sa sinasabi ng mga sociologists o ibang mga tao, when you look at the West, we are in a postmodern world or society na kung saan marami ngayon, lalo na sa West, ang kanilang paniwala ay eh, there is no absolute truth. Kahit na itong palpit na to, kunyari ang tingin niya rito, eh, brown, pwedeng sabihin na ba, ah, hindi, hindi yan brown, red yan. So, para sa kanila, okay, kung yun ang tingin mo, na totoo sa'yo, kung masaya ka doon, o di ganun na nga, para wala tayong away. So, it's a postmodern world. There are no absolute truths anymore. And so, it's so comforting to discover na merong mga bagay na talagang totoo, na hindi pa bago-bago, na hindi inia-adjust pa o hindi muna kailangang itweak katulad ng Ibanghelyo. 
The gospel is certainly true and it can be fully trusted. Napaka-importante para sa ating lahat na nagka-claim na tayo ay mga believers in God, believers in Jesus, believers in the Bible. You must know the gospel. Do you know what the gospel is? Alam niyo ba kung ano yun? Alam niyo ba kung saan nakasandal ang inyong buhay? Pag kayo ay mamamatay na ngayong gabi, alam niyo ba kung ano pinangahawakan ninyo. Pag tinanong ng Panginoon, bakit kita papapasukin dito sa aking langit? Meron ka bang anchor for your soul? Meron ka bang pinangahawakan? Masasabi pa, Panginoon, ito po ang pinangahawakan ko. Hindi yung kabutihan ko, hindi yung talino ko, hindi yung galing ko, kundi yung mensahe na binigay mo. Ito ang pinangahawakan ko. Your promise, your good news. So, ito ang sinasabi rito ni Apostle Paul. That is certainly true, the message. It can be fully trusted. Now, what is Paul referring to nung sinabi niyang, the saying is trustworthy? Ano kayang ibig niya sabihin dito? Well, the immediate context points back to the majestic gospel truths in the long sentence that runs from verses 5 up to 7 of chapter 3. Kung titingnan natin, ulitin ko, yung immediate context it appears like ito ang nire-refer ni Paul. Ano ba sabi niya sa Titus chapter 3? Simulan na lang natin sa verse uh, 3 up to verse 7 kasi dito sinimulan niyang ipakita ano yung condition natin dati bago tayo naligtas. Tinan niya sabi ni Paul sa Titus 3 verses 3 to 7. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But... Ito na yung mahabang sentence, magsimula sa verse 4 hanggang sa verse 7. But, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Napakahabang sentence. From verses 4 up to 7, isang sentence lang yan. Isang sentence lang. Pero may kita natin dito na this contains the majestic gospel truths. Na itong sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, the saying is trustworthy. The saying is trustworthy. Yang sentence na yan, yang statement na yan, yan ay totoo, yan ay pwede tayong magtiwala dyan sa katotohanan yan. But in a larger context, kung titingnan natin yung kabuan ng sulat ni Apostle Paul dito sa Titus, well, pwede rin nating sabihin that this refers, nung sinabi niyang the saying is trustworthy, pwedeng i-extend pa natin yan sa chapter 2. Yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul sa buong chapter 2, at saka yung unang dalawang verses ng Titus chapter 3 verses 1 and 2, at pati na rin yung nakalagay sa verse 3 up to verse 7, kasama na yan dito sa sinasabi ni Paul na the saying is trustworthy. Dahil kung titingnan natin na mabuti itong nakalagay sa Titus chapter 2, eh talaga namang trustworthy itong nakalagay rito. Tingnan ninyo, sabi niya, basahin lamang natin just to see. And I believe you will agree, this is a trustworthy statement. Sabi niya, starting with chapter 2 verse 1, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. And then he begins to relate to us yung mga iba't ibang mga gender and age groups in the church na kailangan lumakad sa paraan na ito na ayon sa kalooban ng Panginoon o ayon sa Ibanghelyo. Sabi niya, older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in the faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Slaves are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. And then look at the next Portion, verses 11 up to 14. For, sabi dito, 
The grace of God. Again, this one long sentence. Ang haba nitong sentence na to. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave Himself for us, to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. And then verse 15 says, Declare these things. Ano yung declare mo na these things? Simula nung sinabi niya sa chapter 2 verse 1 hanggang dito sa verse 14. Declare these things. Exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Actually, lahat itong portion na to sa chapter 2, this talks about how believers are to relate with one another in the church. Sa loob ng iglesia, paano dapat mag-relate ang bawat isa? Sa kapwa niyang mana ng palataya. But when we come to chapter 3, this talks about how believers are to relate to this world. Dito sa mundong ito, napuno ng mga makasalanan, mga rebelde ng mga tao. So, papano daw? Sabi ni Apostle Paul sa chapter 3 verse 1, Remind them, yung mga mananampalataya, to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Pag sabi niya diyang all people, ibig sabihin niya lahat ng mga hindi mana ng palataya, ayusin yung relationship niyo sa kanila. Sa mga civil authorities sa gobyerno na hindi mga Christian, sa mga kapitbahay niya na mga hindi Christian, makirelate kayo ng maayos sa kanila. And then he says, ito na ng verse 3 hanggang sa verse 7. Sabi niya, itong dahilan kung ba't dapat niyong gawin niyan. Dahil dati kayo, ganito buhay ninyo, you were wicked, you were sinful, you were disobedient, you were foolish, you were led astray, you were slaves to various passions and pleasures, and then, the Lord saved us by grace. Niligtas tayo by grace. And so, pagkatapos yung sabihin lahat ng mga bagay related to this wonderful, majestic message about God's salvation, sabi sa verse 8, the saying is trustworthy. The saying is trustworthy and I want you to insist on these things. So, pwede that that refers to verses 4 up to 7. Pwedeng yun ang tinututukan ni Paul. Pero pwede rin simula pa ng chapter 2. Sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, insist on these things. This is how believers are to relate with one another. This is how old men are to live. This is how older women are to live as believers. This is how younger women and younger men, this is how ministers, this is how slaves are to relate with one another as Christians. Union chapter 2. And then chapter 3, this is how you relate to this evil generation. This is how you do it. And so, ito sabi niya, the saying is trustworthy and I want you to insist on these things. Okay, sana maging maliwanag yun. Yan ang sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. Pwedeng yung dalawang yan ang direksyon niya nung sinabi niyang these things. Now, so that's the first. The value of the message. Yung mensaheng yun ay totoo. Yung mensaheng yun ay pwede nating mapagkatiwalaan. Kung nag-aalala tayo, iniisip natin, ano ba ang dapat kong gawin na ikatutuwa ng Panginoon? Tutukan nyo yung chapter 2 and chapter 3 ng Titus, you will not make a mistake. Some of you are wondering, I want to find out what the will of God is. Ano bang kalooban ng Panginoon Diyos? Read Titus chapter 2 and Titus chapter 3 and you'll know what God's will is. Follow it, follow the gospel, do good works that is based on the gospel, then your life will be pleasing and honoring in the sight of God. Okay, so that's the first, the value of the message. Now look at the next, the duty of the messenger. Ano ang responsibility ng mensahero? Because the content of the message is so trustworthy, yung binanggit ko kanina, chapters 2 and 3, Paul instructed Titus, at ito yung mag apply na rin sa lahat ng nagtuturo na salita ng Diyos, lahat ng mga church leaders in all generations, ang sinasabi niya rito, na gawin ninyo itong napaka-importanteng duty na ito. And what is it? Sabi niya, I want you to insist on these things. Dahil itong mga bagay na sinabi ko is so trustworthy, 
Ito ay totoo, ito ay mapagkakatiwalaan. I want you to insist on these things. When Paul wrote, I want you to insist on these things, he was not just expressing a mere desire. Hindi lang niya sinasabing, sana, ito gusto ko sana, gawin ninyo. Pero kung hindi nyo gagawin, okay lang. Pero kung gagawin nyo, mas mabuti. Hindi yon ang ibig sabihin nun. Nung sinabi niya rito, I want. Although in other portions of Scripture, it generally means to wish, to want, to desire, to intend. But in this particular context, it is used of an apostolic ordering. Ito ay order ng isang apostol. It is a command. It is to direct. This is a directive. Ito ang sinasabi kong gawin mo. So pag sinabi niyang, I want, gusto ko, nagawin mo ito. Yung Greek word na pinagmulan niyan, according to one lexicon, ibig sabihin nun is, itong phrase na to na I want, expresses decisions of the will, that occur after previous deliberation or careful thought. Pagkatapos mong pag-isipan ng mabuti, kung ano ang consequences nito, kung anong implication nitong katotohanan ito, then you make a decision. At yung decision na yon eh hindi flimsy na decision, hindi yung decision na pabago-bago, kundi ito'y isang decision na matibay, ito'y isang decision na talagang sigurado, kasi alam mo, this is true, this is reliable. Ang consequence ito, this is going to bring eternal life. This is going to bring much blessing to the people. Kaya para sa kanya, this is what I want. This is my decision. This is what I want you to do. This is my command for you. Now, what was Paul's order or command or directive for Titus? Ang responsibility ni Titus according to this is to insist on these things. Mga salitang yun, very striking. No? Pag sabing, to insist I want you to insist on these things. The word insist comes from a Greek word which means to speak confidently, to affirm, to insist. Ito ang paraan kung paano translate ito ng iba't ibang mga Bible versions. For example, ESV, sabi, I want you to insist on these things. Sabi ng Amplified Bible. And concerning these things, I want you to insist steadfastly. Sabi ng Concordant Literal version. And I am intending you to be insistent concerning these things. Sabi ng Weymouth New Testament. And on these various points, I would have you insist strenuously. Pag may mga ganong salita, strenuously. Parang kahit na may strain, merong pagod na kasama rito. Pero ituloy mo to, hindi ito magiging madali. Pero pilitin mong gawin ito. I-insist mo to, maging steadfast ka dito. Huwag kang tatalikod, huwag kang lilihis. Dire-diretso, ituro mo ito. Idiin mo to. Sabi ng King James Version, And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Lagi mo itong i-affirm. Lagi mo itong sabihin. Lagi mong bigyan ng diin. Sabi ng literal version, and concerning these things, I desire you strongly affirm. Another translation, and concerning these things, I counsel thee to affirm fully. Tinan yung mga related terms, so affirm constantly. Strongly to affirm. Affirm fully. Sabi ng NIV, to stress these things. Sabi ng Good News Bible, I want you to give special emphasis on these matters. Sabi ng West's New Testament translation, And concerning these things, I desire you to be constantly, strongly assertive. Yun ang sabi ni Paul. Sabi niya, pag pinag-usapan natin itong mga bagay nito, if you are a teacher of God's Word, kung ikaw ay nagtuturo ng salita ng Panginoon Diyos, if you are a church leader, sabi ni Apostle Paul, if you are an elder, these are the things that I want you to insist on. Insist on the gospel. Yung mga bagay na narinig nyo dati sa ating pag-aaral related sa that we are saved by grace alone, by faith alone. Dati masama tayo, dati papuntang tayong impyerno. But by the mercy of God, not because of our good works, we were justified, we were regenerated, yung Holy Spirit was poured upon us abundantly, we were adopted into His family. Yung mga bagay niyan, insist on those things. Keep on teaching the gospel. Lagi mong idiin yon. But not only that, 
Tulad nung sinabi ko nga sa inyo, may, pati yung chapter 2, kasama dito sa these things, ano yung nakalagay sa chapter 2? Sabi nung chapter 2, ito daw ang basis nito mga good works na to na dapat nakikita sa iba't ibang mga age groups. Sabi ng verses 11 to 14, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for Himself a people for His own possession who are zealous for good works. Pasensya na kayo kung binasa ko ng ganong kabilisan because that's just one sentence. Isang sentence lang yun. Walang period dun sa gitna nun. So, yun na sinasabi. You insist on these things. So, parang sinasabi rito, wag tayong magsawang marinig itong mga katotohanan to. Kung ikaw ay nagtuturo na salita ng Diyos, wag kang magsawa na ituro yon. Itong mga katotohanan ito tungkol sa Ibanghelyo, wag lamang itong ituro sa mga unbelievers. The believers must preach this, must teach this to themselves. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, eh, mananampalataya na ako. Ano ba yan? Gospel na naman. Sawan-sawa na ako. Puro na lamang tayo. Gospel. Puro na lang justification. Puro na lang regeneration. Puro na lang gato. But the Apostle Paul said, insist on these things. But of course, you don't just teach the gospel. Sabi rin ni Apostle Paul, eto rin mga good works na to. Tulad sabi niya sa chapter 2 verse 1, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Yung sound doctrine, you may say, yun yung ibanghelyo. But the things that accord sound doctrine, yun yung mga good works, yun yung mga virtues na dapat ginagawa ng older men, older women, younger women, younger men, slaves, ministers of the gospel. So you talk about the gospel, you talk about good works, you insist on these things. You tell the people kung sila ay totoong ligtas, there must be good works seen in their lives. Kung hindi nakikita yung good work sa kanilang buhay, wag nilang sabihin na sila'y mananampalataya. Kung yung mga nakalagay dito ay yun ang totoo sa kanilang buhay, mahiya sila sa kanilang sarili. Kalimbawa, sabi na sa Titus chapter 3, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Kung hindi yun nakikita sa'yo, sinasabi ni Paul, insist on that. Sabihin mo, mali yun. Kasalanan yun. God doesn't like it. They're not pleasing in the sight of God. You can tell people, if you're the leader of the church, you can tell them, Brad, sis, mali ang ginagawa mo. You're quarreling. You're not gentle. You're not showing perfect courtesy. You're not submissive to your rulers and authorities. That's wrong. Eh, sabi ni Paul, insist on these things. Affirm constantly. Affirm fully. Strongly affirm. Give special emphasis. Constantly, strongly assert these truths. When you think about this, eh kung ito yung lagi mong ina-assert, ito yung ini-insist mo, eh di, dapat yung mga tao ngayon, for example, who claim to be ministers of the gospel and all they talk about is politics, they're doing something wrong. Paul didn't say, insist on this, o punta tayo doon sa kalye, magbuha tayo ng mga placard at sabihin, ibagsak ang demonyong gobyerno na ito. That's not what we're supposed to do. Sabi ni Paul, insist on these things, not insist on those things. See, when you think about it, it gives you a clear direction. If you're the minister of the gospel, you know. If you're a member of a church and you know na parang you're in a church that has parang leftist ang kanyang leaning and they always talk about raising up arms, they're hitting the government, they're saying ganto ganyan, ganyan. You begin to say, tangan mo na, hindi yata ito sinasabi ng Bible ko ah. Sabi dito, insist on these things. And all I read here is, the grace of God that has appeared, submit to your rulers and authorities, be obedient, be ready for every good work. That's what the Apostle Paul says. That is the duty of the messenger. One who claims to be a minister of God, that is his duty. Look at the third point. The immediate objective of the instruction. Ano yung objective ng lahat ng instruction nito na sinabi ni Paul sa Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 3? Well, the immediate purpose Paul had in mind why Titus was to speak confidently about those truths was, sabi rito, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. That's the immediate 
objective nitong exhortation ni Paul kay Titus. Sabi niya, Titus, gawin mo to so that those who have believed in God. Now, parte-partehin natin itong portion na to. You will take note of several things here. First, the trustworthy message is directed to kanino? Ano nakalagay dito? To those who have believed in God. Now, this is not to say na hindi na tayo mag evangelize dun sa ibang mga tao. No? Of course, yung context nito, this is addressing believers. This is addressing believers who were led astray by the false teachers in Titus chapter 1. Kaya nga kinakailangan na magkaroon ng mga elders dahil pami-pamilya ang nadala nitong mga false teachers na ito. Hindi na sila gumagawa ng mga good works. And so si Paul, in order to address that, sabi niya, ito ituro mo sa mga mana ng palataya. Kailangan maging maliwanag sa kanila. Kung sila'y totoong mga Kristiyano, they must be doing good works. Pero tinan niyo, sabi, this needs to be addressed directly to those who have believed in God. Ano ibig sabihin ng to those who believed in God? This is not simply the opposite of atheists. Ano ibig sabihin? What I mean is, Kung ikaw ay Muslim, so sabi mo, oh, naniniwala naman ako sa Diyos. Kung ikaw ay, kunyari, sa ibang relihiyon, kay kibuloy ka, sabi mo, oh, naniniwala rin naman ako sa Diyos. Kung ikaw ay iglesia ni Krista, sabi mo, naniniwala naman ako sa Diyos, hindi naman ako atheist. Now, is that what it's referring to? Is this primarily addressed to those who believe in God in general? No. Hindi ito statement in general, to those who believe in God. Rather, it refers to genuine Christians. Yung genuine Christians sa pinag-usapan dito, ang daming nakalagay dito. Eh. Nakalagay sa Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce, etc. And it focuses on Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 3, justification comes through Jesus Christ. So, ang pinag-usapan dito na believers in God, Although ganun ang pagkakagamit rito, this, in its context, does not refer to just anyone who claims to believe in God. Remember that the Jews believed in God, and yet, when Jesus Christ confronted them in John chapter 8, He said, You are of your father, the devil. So not because they claim to believe in God, does it mean they were pleasing in the sight of God. If you are a true believer in God, you will honor Jesus Christ. You will believe in Jesus Christ. You will put your trust in Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Okay, so those who believe in God are those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 